So continuing with the theme of data structures, uh, I first went through some conceptual theoretical stuff with you guys, and now I'm going to go through some concrete examples in code. Because this is a C++ series, we're going to focus, like, um, like I said, on the, the data structures that come included with C++ that are part of the standard library, the standard template library to be more specific. So I'm going to do three examples in this video. Um, first, I'm going to show you basically how the common ground it, with respect to how all data structures, it, at least the standard template ones in C++ work. So I'm going to show you how those work and the, and the, and the basics of them. And then I'm going to show you two examples of how to use two specific data structures and, and maybe like an application for those two things. Um, I'm not going to cover every data structure there is because um, this video would take forever, but it'll get you the basic idea. So um, first thing I'm going to do is include vector. That's the most common data structure um, that's used from the STL. And I'm going to show you the syntax for declaring one of these things and um, how to iterate through them. So it's, you know, it's in the namespace standard, but I'm already using it up there because uh, I hate typing a lot. So um, it's basically the type is vector, and it's actually a template class. So what you do is you give it, in a, as a template argument, type of object that's going to be in your data structure, in this case, vector of int, and then, of course, the name of the variable. So I really don't feel like typing a lot right now, so I'm just going to call this v. So basically, that's how you declare one of these things. Because these, because all data structures that are that are included in part of C++ are uh, templatized, um, you will use this template syntax a lot. And this is one of the things that makes dealing with these things a little more complicated than it might normally be if it was like hard coded to be like arrays of integers or floats or whatever. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I digress. So how would you use one of these things? Well, there's multiple ways. Um, the simplest one is if you're on C++11, you can set these things directly equal to the initializer syntax with the curly braces and uh, use it just like that, um, which is pretty cool. Um, another way would be to declare it outright. I'm hitting Control C instead of Command C. I'm used to being in Windows. Um, so you can declare it outright, and you could actually add items to it at will. So you can. Certain data structures have certain arguments, or uh, certain. Um, what am I saying? Arguments have certain methods that work on them. Push back and push front are very common to almost, at least most of the ones that are not like maps and stuff. So you can do this. And this fills it up with the exact same stuff. Um, like I said, you could also push front if you wanted to. Um, so that's another way to initialize these things. Um, these classes have their um, operator overloading. They have operator overloads uh, for quite a few things you would expect. Um, for things like a vector, for example, you could do v2 sub 0 equals 5. Um, you can read and write to it that way. However, when you declare them and you plan on using elements in them, unless you've already, you know, dynamically increased the size this way or initialized it to something that's not empty, uh, you have to pass via constructor the number of elements that are going to be in your array if, if, if you're going to use it this way. So in this case, it actually creates a blank vector of 100 elements. And if I wanted to, I could use, you know, v2 uh, anywhere from 0 to 99 and it would work just fine. Second. So how do you actually go through something like this? Well if you have a vector um, you actually can I don't want to say cheat but you can use a syntax that's very specific to vectors so you can do for an i equals 0 i less than v dot size size is a method that's common to all uh, STL um, data structures it basically returns a number of elements in there so I could do this um, here's what's interesting, however. There's a concept in these things uh, that are common to all of them as well called iterators. And I could do an entire video. Um, I could do an entire video on iterators, but I'm just going to gloss over some of the properties of them real quickly. So 
Iterators are nested types, meaning that they live inside uh, the respective class that you want to iterate through. So for example, an iterator for vector that iterates through a vector of ints would be vector int double colon iterator. The, generally the way these work is that you would set them usually equal to some beginning or ending of the range of, of your data structure that you want to iterate through. So for example, you might do v.begin. That will be an iterator that represents the beginning of the vector v. Um, you can think of iterators as an abstraction of pointers. In other words, they allow you to indirectly reference the underlying type, for example, int, the same way a pointer would. So they respond with respect to the uh, same operators you'd expect in a pointer. So for example, I could do star it, and that would actually dereference the iterator, and in this case give me the first element in here, which would be 99. So I could do that. You can uh, do pointer arithmetic or iterator arithmetic between them. So I can increment this thing and it would give me the next item, which is two. Um, you could go backwards and forwards. Um, if it is a random access iterator, which means a vector is, um, you can actually do pointer arithmetic that's not just incrementing. So you could do plus equals five, which would be stupid. Let me do plus equals two. I don't want to go off the end of this thing, which I almost did. So you can do that. Um, yeah. You can, if it was a struct in here, you could actually use it like IT field. I'm not going to show that example right now, but basically be the exact same thing as if you had a pointer to a struct. In other words, IT contains everything that you need to, to iterate through a sequence of these integers. Um, you're probably wondering what the hell happens if you go too far. So let's see, we had 99, we had 2, this would take you to 3, this would take you to 4, and this would take you to 5. Let me just confirm that. So 5 is the last item. What the heck would happen if we were to iterate this again off the end of the vector and try to see out it now? This ought to crash. So it gives negative 1. Um, Essentially, what I've just done here is illegal, and uh, I think it should crash, and I think it depends on um, the implementation of the STL, but basically, this pointer has gone off the end, and the way you can think of it, uh, sequences of iterators in all STL data structures is that it will start with begin, it will end at end. <clears throat> so bringing all this back to the concept of the for loop above, the most ugly yet <laughs> standard way to iterate through an STL data structure of any kind is essentially to do this. Warning, this is very ugly and luckily you don't quite have to do this all the time anymore, but still. You say for vector int, or whatever the type is, double colon, iterator, type dot begin, not equal, end, and it plus plus, and then essentially at this point you can do that. End is considered something that, that is off the end, like I said, of, the, of the, the range of items in your data structure. So typically you will consider that to be the, the last iterator in, in the sequence. And you do not dereference end. Uh, it's considered invalid. It's considered almost kind of like null or something. Um, I, like I said, this is very ugly syntax. Um, one thing I did want to say is, um, it might also help explain this a little bit. A lot of times, if you don't feel like, like for example, if this was more complex than int in here, sometimes you want to have something like int, you know, the element, which in this case I guess would be i. You could do something like this. So if you wanted to work with i directly, um, it doesn't make as much sense here, but I do this a lot if I'm dealing with something that has a lot of... Um, you know, dereferencing in there, and maybe I only want to do it once and grab the reference. So you're probably looking at this and saying, holy shit, this is a lot of code, and I would not want to have to type this regularly to work with data structures. And you're right, and there is basically something that was added to C++11 that is a godsend. that makes it a lot easier to work with this stuff um, with, with basically iterating through data structures. It's called a range-based for loop. I think it's actually really similar in syntax to the way Java does it. But basically you can simplify everything above there as basically 
this, which is a million times simpler. Uh, you basically just put a colon. So you basically declare what's going to be your um, per, per uh, loop iteration value, which basically i at every single step is going to be one i inside these uh, inside of v and you put a colon and then v so basically it's for i in v that's the way I read that and it works beautifully um, you can even actually if, if you want to be even simpler like if you have a complex type in here you could say auto and the only reason I put this reference in here is because sometimes I want to modify it and I think don't quote me on that if I don't um, I don't get a reference I don't think it would change see the underlying um, type when I do that. However, if I grab a reference to i and make a change there, it does change the underlying thing. So it's just in one of those examples where do I want to deal with copying it or do I want to iterate you know, by reference or by value. So uh, I typically will do it by reference just because I tend to always be thinking that you know the object might not want to be copied. So um, that's why I, I usually will put the, the reference parameters in here. So um, that's vector. Um, that was an example of really simple uh, data structure and, and how to mess with it. Um, there are some other ones. Uh, real quickly, I want to show you guys uh, before I go into more concrete examples. There's list. So if I switch this out to list, this is what's so beautiful about the STL. If I switch this out for list, everything works exactly the same. I basically change the data structure. The only diff difference is maybe I can't do this anymore. You know, that probably wouldn't build because lists aren't random access. And if I had an iterator for one of these things, I love auto, by the way. Auto makes it easier, too. I don't have to declare this ugly, which is basically what IT is. I don't have to declare that anymore. So if I have an iterator, I can't do this anymore either. I have to do either plus, plus, or minus, minus, but I can't, I can't jump more than once because that would be O of N, and I guess they just don't want to expose that. Um, so that's something. Uh, one thing the list can do that vector can't is I can push front, which is really nice. Um, and I believe, I didn't show you this with vector, but you can use an iterator to insert. So for example, if I wanted to take v.begin auto iterator equals v plus plus, which would get me at the second element, which was two, and then I wanted to v.insert, I could insert a number in there like this, and that should work. I think I might have to do it like that. So I see I inserted 69 at the second position, so I could do, I could do things like that. Um, I was planning on making this all one video, but this has already gone a little too long, so um, I think I might just kind of call this like a code intro video for STL data structures and actually go into something more interesting in the next video. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. This is what happens when I don't plan these. This video is a little haphazard, but um, I think you guys get the general idea of how to use these things. Um, I almost wish there was a way I could like take questions before I like go to the next topic. Um, the long and skinny of it is basically that you can use these things in a way that would make a lot of sense and that you could iterate them, iterate through them really easily using um, this new C++ 11 style syntax which is really nice.